So we've just been to my granddad's and to see how he is and stuff and I got a phone call off the fertility clinic and they were like, oh, can you talk? So I kind of like ran into the kitchen. Ran off. Didn't I? You did. I didn't remember, but it was today was the deadline so, for yeah. consent forms. So she was, they've literally obviously looked through them today. Yeah, yeah so they said that the 18th was the day that... Um, we had to have the forms in for. Yeah, and they, they review everything. Review everything, so when we had spoke to them last. So they've obviously looked at it straight away and thought everything's good to go. So yeah, they, they rang and they said a few scheduling appointments have come up for next week. Um, if you can make it, and I was just like, yes, 100%, definitely. So we've got our appointment next week on the 25th of... July. July. I was yeah. going to say June, and it's to kind of go over everything. I think they kind of help you with, not help you, but show you how to do the injections yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then at that point, they will give us a date for our egg collection, so our egg retrieval, which will determine the dates that we start the injections. Yeah. Which is kind of what we've been like wanting because I feel like we've just been in bit of limbo really or when's it gonna start when's it gonna start so i think this will be really good to have like that in your mind yeah be like okay this is where we start and it's like we, we can actually make progress yeah and just kind of plan around it yeah because i do feel like there's been a, a big element of limbo with this whole process so yeah excited oh. <laughs> good morning it is tuesday the 25th of july and i look very tired i didn't really have that much sleep to be honest last night um i just kept waking up i was at the toilet and then i was like tossing and turning i was having weird dreams and um yeah today we've got an appointment at the fertility clinic and we're actually going to get our date for treatment which is so exciting i'm like equal parts like excited and nervous it's such a surreal experience if you've been through this before you will probably be able to relate and be like yeah Beth I get it it's so exciting to think that the prospect of having a baby is on the horizon but then also knowing everything you've got to do to get there it's such a weird mix of emotions to think the first time me and Connor went to the fertility clinic was November 2022 and we're now in july 2023 it feels kind of surreal like it feels like it's been going on a long time but i'm grateful i'm just so grateful that we are where we are now i think my biggest thing is i wish i had have took you along to those initial three appointments connor's two sperm analysis appointments but obviously of course not in the room and my scan appointment but i think to be honest i was just so <sighs> nervous like I mentioned in the last video, maybe in denial, didn't really, really didn't want to have IVF. And now I'm in a different place. You know, I know it's a means to an end. I began to trust the process. And today is a great opportunity for us to go in, find everything out that we are still unsure on, ask all our questions. I've got a full list of questions and leave known when we're going to be doing our injections when we're going to be having our egg retrieval and when the implantation around about should be happening it'll hopefully give us a little bit more clarity and then know what we're working towards for the rest of this year i don't know when you're going to be watching this i don't know if i'm going to have the bottle to put it up before i start injections during injections after injections i really don't know but i'm documenting it anyway so that a hopefully if you're going through this you can get a little bit of comfort because the biggest thing for me and connor is we don't know anybody who's gone through this we don't know anybody who has had ivf we are out of both our families all of our friends nobody's gone through this so we're like the first people that we know it's a very unique experience but it can be very lonely too so I want to share because of that. I want to be there for people who don't have anybody, like, who are also going through this. But also, you know, it's it's real life. In the past 12 months, this has been the thing that has consumed me and Connor the most. Because we thought my operation was going to be the thing that fixed it and would be able to have a baby. And yeah, 
not everything is sunshine and roses just want to keep it real and show you everything that's going on i think it'll be good for us to look back on as well in the future but yeah so i'm feeling like excited but nervous i'm gonna have a shower i've got an eyebrow appointment this morning then i've got therapy and then we've got our appointment this afternoon at half two so yeah don't be alarmed by my pale face and my very severe brows i had them done this morning and they look a lot but they'll be very nice once they've settled down we're just on my way to costco before we go to the fertility clinic like this feeling is why i realize i've not vlogged so far because i get so nervous like i just get in in my own head and connor was like oh you're gonna vlog and i was like yeah in a minute <laughs> yeah we've just got some time to kill so we're just gonna get some costco petrol and then we're gonna head over there plenty of time to park so i'm not freaking out don't like being late yeah how are you feeling con feeling good yeah, excited uh get the ball rolling well i know what you mean in terms of like feeling a bit nervous because it's like you build it up build it up build it up to this big thing and now that it's actually happening, it's like, oh shit, like, am I ready? Like, uh, are we going to be able to do this? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's scary, but in a good way. You've got nothing to be scared about. It's not your body. Yeah, but I'm going to have to do it for you. It's the least you can do. Just jumping. No, but I, I've literally just had a therapy appointment. She did say, like, it's so easy for, like, everybody to say, oh, it's so exciting, oh, it's amazing, oh, that's brilliant that you've got your start day. But, like none of those people are actually going to physically go through the physical and the mental what your body's going to go through you're almost handing your body over to say you can do what you want to it for like five six eight weeks so yeah i think it is hard to strike that balance of being positive and also being realistic because in reality i'm just really scared like i'm really really scared i'd be lying to say that i'm not yeah, that the prospect of being pregnant and having a baby is exciting, but it's it, it can't be ignored the amount of procedure that's going to have to happen before that becomes a thing. So if you know anybody who's going through this or you're going through it yourself, I think it's always important to remember that it's it's good to have positivity around you, but it's also you, you also need your feelings um, validated because they are valid, and it's definitely not just an exciting time it's scary too because we could have started with injections next week and got my egg retrieval on the 20 sorry the 11th of september but because we're going on holiday we've had a delay by three weeks and because otherwise it wouldn't line up and i had a feeling this was gonna happen didn't i yeah was a problem because when i spoke to the woman she said we're taking people in now for september and that was back in june been ringing trying to get an update and stuff yeah we were told weren't we? Was it could be next year yeah. then we were told actually it might be the end of this year then we were told oh some slots have opened up so my sister's just texted us and said today is world ivf day like what's the chances of that us going for our appointment and getting our date on world ivf day like that's so what's the word cool point poignant what's that oh, word symbolic what does poignant mean I don't, I don't think it's that though, is it? It is that. There was a lot of info to obviously go over and obviously practicing with the injections and stuff. Um, that's got me a bit nervous. It's got you nervous? Yeah, like obviously to be honest, like the way you it. injected, you nearly it's stopped the needle. It's fine. Well, your skin wouldn't be as hard as that thing. That thing was hard. Yeah, so we've got... This is all the syringes. And then we've got the plan on here. So and the drugs that I'll be taking. So yeah, ideally, I would be starting injecting next Friday, 
but because we're going on holiday in three weeks time they've said that I can wait I could inject while I'm on holiday but the symptoms of the busarellin injections like kind of almost like but they give you menopausal symptoms um, so do you really want that when you're on holiday so they said when we get back off for holiday on the Friday we'll start inject sorry on the Sunday I'll start injecting the following Friday for three weeks and then change to the follicle stimulating yeah, injections. Yeah, so. And then you get your HCG injection, injection and that's six thousand five hundred IU. That's how much of it is in the trigger shot. Mm. Yeah. So we're back home now. Connor's had to go straight into a meeting and I've had a bit of time to digest. I've spoke to me mum spoke my sister, I've spoke to my therapist. I am super pleased that we've got a date. It's just, we've been waiting so long for a date. And then when we're given a date, that could be like super soon and I could start injecting next Friday. I just felt disappointed that that wasn't gonna be the reality and I'm gonna have to wait another like four weeks. <laughs> and like right now, the thought of like a holiday versus a baby, like I just want it as soon as possible, so. Yeah, probably seemed a bit deflated and stuff, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, the egg retrieval that first put to us, was, it's not miles apart, but you'll know if you've been through this that any small smidgen of day change or like a day later is like feels like the longest time. I'm just feeling a bit overwhelmed. I'm gonna go to the pharmacy now and get all the medication. Yeah, spoke to my naturopath. I've emailed her because I've started working on a protocol with her to make gut imbalances more balanced. So I've <laughs> emailed her to say like, does that affect what, what our plan was? Which I'm assuming it does. And I'm waiting to do the Dutch test as well, which is a hormone test, which is really good for people who have endometriosis. You're meant to do it between day 18 and 22 of your cycle. And I only got it the day after day 22. And then we're on the cruise for my next cycle and then my cycle after that i'm not gonna have a cycle because i'm gonna be in an induced menopause situation don't know when i'm gonna do that so it's just all these questions whizzing around in my head all of these thoughts all of these things like thinking you know is this the right thing to do should i do that can i go there there's a few things that like engagement parties and stuff that we're not going to be able to attend which is just sad because it kind of collides with egg retrieval because of the date but it is what it is naturally such an overthinker i just need to let it simmer i need to let it process i need to let it settle it's just amazing how like easy breezy the staff are they're like yeah and then just start injecting and then this and then that and because it's just all they do all day so like it's no big deal to them but to me it's like the biggest deal you know like i mentioned in my last video like i have health anxiety like i, I get really worried about stuff and it's a lot but it's it's positive it's good yeah i'll just keep you posted essentially if i allow myself to be positive and think not even think big but realistically i could be pregnant by mid-october which just doesn't feel real i'm gonna go to tesco and i'm gonna get myself some vegan chocolate and some nachos and i'm gonna have some nice treats tonight because the emotions are high. So I just thought I would jump on here because it's been a few days now since we got so we got our IVF date and I just wanted to update on where we're at. Nothing's happened but I am feeling better about it. I'm feeling more acceptance mm -hmm. and I'm feeling more calm and I still haven't got my prescription because I did go to the chemist to get my prescription to go in the injections but it's a hospital prescription so i need to go to the hospital to get that but yeah i'm feeling a little bit more at peace with it and like not as overwhelmed because that's the kind of person i am i need a few days to let something soak in and kind of marinate and then i kind of come to terms with it even though i knew this was the route we were going down it's still hard to then think oh well this is what it's my, the next I don't know, like two months are gonna be like. So yeah, I'm feeling better about it because I haven't yet edited this footage. So I don't know what it is or how positive or negative it's gonna be. But yeah, just what I'd say, like 
if you are going through this as well like just give yourself some time and give yourself some grace that like it's a big deal so it will probably take you every step is going to be it's a brand new experience so every step is going to be like and it's something to adjust to because it's like a new thing that you've never done before and you don't know how you're going to feel yeah no i agree i think it's lovely to have a, a date now something tangible we can look forward towards and just begin the actual journey you know and have a little family did you have tuna for your lunch I did. kiss so today i've been to town and i thought i'd pop to the hospital to pick up all of my medication so i've got it ready so some of it needs to be put in the fridge and some can just stay in the cupboard i'm gonna get some little boxes and keep them nicely in the fridge yeah it's getting real now i know i'm not starting my injections for i think three weeks because we're going holiday next sunday and then we're yeah about three weeks time i start my injections but they said make sure you get it you've got it in it's good to have and then at least you're ready to go when you come back so So I've cleared some space here to put the drugs that need need refrigerated and I've had to put all my pickles and all my sauces there. And then the other ones I've just put up here in the medicine cupboard. That just needs to stay below 25 degrees, I think it said. So that should be fine in there. Yeah, all sorted. Um, just not gonna think about it until I get back from your holidays now, I think. Hi everyone, it is the 24th of August. We actually got back from our holidays on Sunday and I have been really poorly ever since, which is not ideal. I'm a little bit stressed out, I'm not going to lie. I start my injections in two days, got back off holiday, thought I had a chest infection, feel really ill, been coughing my guts up, been trying to tidy, clean, got all my injections out. I want to go to VNMs and get like a little box to keep them in, got my shops box just trying to get prepared i've had loads of work on this week and i think my anxiety is just starting to elevate and subconsciously i know what's coming i don't want to start these injections and completely go back to where i was you know like at the end of last year the start of this year and really lose myself because i am truly feeling more like me these days so yeah i'm not gonna lie tensions have been high this week <laughs> The holiday was amazing, it was the best thing ever, but I've come home with a stupid cough and a stupid cold, but it was the best thing that we could have ever done because it was just like, not a final hurrah, but it kind of felt like that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm back and trying to prepare for what these injections are going to be like, just the actual injection themselves. How's it going to feel? Like, am I going to be able to, like, let Connor inject me? Am I going to have to get my mum to inject me? I'm really frightened of injections. You know, what are the side effects going to be like? It's all just a bit anxiety-provoking. So I'm, like, in clean mode, and I want everything to be tidy, and I want everything to be clean, and everything that I can control, I want to control, and yeah. So all I do is walk around cleaning. <laughs> So that's where we're at. Um, I'm gonna go to BM. I've got a facial today. I had acupuncture yesterday. I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow just to make us feel fresh. It's so long. And I'm gonna go to BMs and get a like a little box and get everything nice and organised and just ready for Saturday. I don't know what to expect. I really don't, and that is not a great place to be, but excited to get on this journey and just get started. I just want to know where I stand, if that makes sense, and the sooner we do this, the sooner we'll know. So it is. IVF injections Eve. I've had my hair done, I've had it cut. I had some bangs put in. I need to style them properly because I got caught in the rain. Me and Connor have been for a lovely meal at Gaucho. I've been to see my mum. Come home, got some treats from MS, and I'm just trying to, gonna try and chill. Yeah, I'm just starting to get a little bit anxious. I don't know whether I showed you my little box that I got from BMs. Thrive of Organisation. So I've put all my injections and the wipes in there. Like we're all set to go. My mum's gonna come up in the morning because I said like, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. Like I hate injections. Who likes injections? Like realistically. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan. Nobody is. And I'm a bit nervous. Just because like 
of course I don't want the pain but then of course because I don't want to change who I am I feel like I've been through so much in the last 12 months maybe even year and a half and like one of my friends was like this is going to be a walk in the park because your body's been through so much and I agree and it's carried us through so much and it's going to carry me through even more sorry about the lipstick and the lip liner been eating and it's just a scary process and a scary thought that these injections might change me completely and I'm getting cramped, I'm doing my period, I can feel it, it's coming, I'm spotting, so I'm hoping these injections are going to just nip that in the bud and stop that in its tracks. But yeah, like, I've been working with a naturopath, I've been having acupuncture, I went for acupuncture earlier this week, like I said I was seeing a fertility acupuncturist and I didn't really think that much of it and then I started seeing somebody else and she's more of a general acupuncturist and she's great and it kills and I've actually got a bruise on my thumb where she put it in there which is really good um, and I really like her so I've been seeing her once a month and my naturopath has got me on a, like a, s a specific protocol to help strengthen my gut and before I got my date for IVF we were going to go through the strengthening of the microbiome to then do almost like a detox, not a detox, but almost like an antimicrobial like process. But because I'm going to be going through this, she said like, let's not do that. Let's focus on supporting your gut, your thyroid, all of your endocrine system. And yeah, so I've got a full on protocol of what I've been taking. I took it on the cruise. I'm still taking it. I'm adding to it. Um, I've run it past the fertility clinic. They said, it seems okay. They said to knock one on the head. I'm starting to feel better because obviously I come back from the cruise and I was feeling a bit unwell and I was like ah so I'm starting to feel a bit better which is good but I think my biggest thing is I just don't want to not recognize myself like I've got like I've built it up in my head I'm like what's this going to be like is it going to be horrendous you know is it going to be a walk in the park is it going to be terrible because I'm just starting to feel like me properly again and I don't want to lose myself I like to think positive I like to think that everything's going to be fine but at the minute I am expecting the worst, I've got to say. Whole five weeks of process, well it'll be longer than five weeks, probably be about eight weeks. Let me show you what I'm taking. This is my drink that I have two times a day. And here I've got wild nutrition, magnesium omega, immune support and pregnancy and new mother support. I was taking the fertility support but it's got more iodine in and because of Hashimoto's or change to the new mother in pregnancy. So here's my vitamin D gummies from Wild Nutrition. I either take that or I take vitamin D and as you can see there's all my pregnancy, omega, magnesium, immune support. She has just gave me this to support my vaginal microbiome we did a, a, a vaginal microbiome test and mine is all spot on so this is just to support it even further which, which is very rare for somebody who has endo so that's great i was taking this that was also in my little concoction here but the fertility clinic said they would prefer me not to take that and i was also taking this for bed and my naturopath has said stop taking this because I'm going to start taking NAC. It's good for endo to support IVF, it's good for Hashimoto's which I have. This I've just started taking today, C-Max, it's got zinc and calcium in because I haven't been feeling very well. And these here, so all my wild nutrition is wild nutrition and these ones you see here are all from my naturopath. What I'm showing you here isn't, I'm not saying go and get that if you're going through IVF or if you are if you have endo or Hashimoto's, please, I'm just telling you what I have. Why am I not in focus? I'm just telling you what I have, but I'm genuinely not recommending you take any of the stuff my naturopath has recommended to me. All the wild nutrition stuff, perfectly fine. You can have a nutritionist call with wild nutrition and I'm pretty sure I've still got a discount code with wild nutrition. So if it's still live, I'll include it in the description box because they're food grown supplements are just absolutely amazing i wouldn't take anything else um, for the majority of my supplements but these powders this powder here this is prescribed by a naturopath so if you don't know what a naturopath is it's like a natural doctor so i reached out to her to support with my hashimoto's my endo and also my fertility and to be honest and my gut to be honest, I've been spot on since I have been working with Bridget. So if you want the details of my naturopath, drop me a message or comment below and I will share that too. And I have Mayo in 
in Orsital, this helps with um, thyroid antibodies. This is to support gut microbiome. I think it strengthens it. And this is to help us get better and just have a strong immune system. I'm gonna get my pajamas, take my makeup off, relax, have some nice yummy foods, and um, I never thought this day would come. It doesn't quite feel real. I've got a bad belly, I'm due on. TMI, but I've got blood in my stools. Who knows why that wants to turn up at this point, but just mm. another layer for me to think about and worry about. It's just about. like, yeah, it's not needed, is it? No. No. It's you first day. To me. Oh, be silly. Beautiful. Always. Mm. My mum's coming up to help. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, I think for the first couple of days, we need to sort of get the swing a bit. We and, need moral support. Yeah, we, we need a bit of help, so, um, you know. I'm so nervous, I don't know why. Well, of course, it's, it's normal to be nervous. You're going to get injected. This is something that you hate. We've come up to a little understanding. I'm going to try and do what I can to support. So every day, because Beth's doing an injection, she gets to squeeze a couple of swats on my back because she loves to squeeze my swats and I hate it. So. You haven't got that many. I haven't got that maybe many, five to be fair. Weeks um, yeah, maybe not five weeks worth. So I'll have to come up with something else. But yeah, but yeah it's obviously it is scary. Um, you know, but we're going to get through it together and we have to remember why we're doing this. like I've got a bob at the front. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we've done the first injection. Mm -hmm. My mum did it and kind of held me hand and made sure I didn't jump back, didn't you? I did. Yeah. How did you think it went? It went amazing. We were really brave. Because, a bit of context, Beth's a nightmare with needles. I tried to get a finger prick from it before and it took about 20 minutes to get the thing. Jumping back, can't do it. Mm. But with this, dead brave. You did it, you held my hand, you didn't look, and then the injection was over before she knew it. So, you know, she was really, I was really proud of her, and she did amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, the first, I think the first one's the worst, you know, it's just the unknown. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, when are the symptoms going to kick yeah, in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, go, just go about your day, it's normal. I know. You know? Yeah. You don't want to have it. No. Yeah, all time. It's easier said than done when you're an overthinker. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Day one down, however many more to go. Don't worry about that. So it is day two. Me mum come up this morning. I'm actually going to take my makeup off while I while I vlog. But my mum come up this morning to help with injections and kind of hugged me. And me mum injected in the left hand side. It hurt more on the left hand side than it did on the right hand side. And you know, if you're watching this and you're fine with injections, then that's probably half the battle. But for me, I'm really not. But I felt a little bit less nervous. Um, today I've actually come on my period and I know that these injections are typically meant to stop the period from coming but because I'm so early on in them I'm assuming that that's the reason why it hasn't. Feeling good, kind of anxiously awaiting symptoms to start kicking in but for now for the most part I'm okay. I'm feeling pretty supported and just want it to keep moving forward and just want to be in a good place with everything so we've just been out we've had a busy day come back i couldn't wait to get my pajamas on and chill because i just feel like there's been a lot of build up i've been thinking about this for months and months and months and now it's finally here yeah like there's been a lot of anxiety a lot of stored tension so now that we're finally here i feel like my body can just relax a little bit and don't mind my hair i've got my bangs that i'm still not sure about so <laughs> so it's been a bit of a hard 24 hours not even 24 hours I had my first cry this morning over coffee because Connor started drinking coffee on an empty stomach he's never drank coffee before and he started 
drinking it in the past couple of months and I just want us to be as clean as possible. I know that sounds probably irrational to some people because some people drink like five cups and ten cups and he's having like two cups. Well, like a double shot in the morning. Hello. I just got through with the doctors. I don't know whether I mentioned. Again, TMI. I, on Friday night, started having blood in my stools and it's like, is it my endo? Is it something else? So that freaked me out before I started my injections on Saturday and my four down 31 to go. <sighs> Not 31 injections to go, 31 days to go because then I up my injections from one to two in about three weeks time. So yeah, me and Connor had an argument about coffee and he couldn't understand what my problem was and I was like, look, I don't want you having coffee on an empty stomach. And yeah, I had an argument, he swore <laughs> and I started crying. Um, you know, and then we're resolved doing that, you know, you're right, like you're doing literally everything in this situation. So it's like the least I can do. And yeah, um, one of my friends told me that she is pregnant last night and it's like just uh, another one on top of everybody else who's pregnant at the minute. Yeah, she she thought she was maybe gonna have to go down a similar route to me, but uh, yeah, like we've been trying for two years, so it's been a long process. So yeah, it's just emotions are running high, and I think emotions are gonna continue to run high. I think they're gonna get more intense. My mum's still coming up and injecting me, but I don't know when to pick my camera up and when not to pick my camera up. It just feels a bit surreal. I just feel like yeah, I just I I, I just feel like what I'm doing still doesn't correlate to what I want it to do and it's just like when you when you start thinking about it on a level a deep level if it does start to freak you out you've just got to stay positive and just got to believe that this will happen so yeah I'm about to have my chia seed pudding with strawberries on do a day of editing I've got therapy which is much needed today and wait for the doctor to give me a call back in regards to the blood in my stool Good morning, it is day five. Just had my injection, it's going well. <sighs> Still doing the two person situation and I just wanted to show you, got some spots. I think that's a side effect of the Bussarellin. Makes sense. I'm not really typically a spotty person. We've got a few friends there. Ooh, we've got three. Stunning. Still, so far, so good. Just gotta carry on with this. Don't have a scan until I think the 18th of September. I'm hanging on in there and I'm feeling much better. I feel in a better mind frame today than I did yesterday. So I think um, Beth is absolutely smashing it. She's being very brave. She's not She's not like backing away or anything like that. You're just getting straight into it, aren't you? Yeah, because I hate injections, don't I? You do. I mean, who likes them really, but... Yeah, but you know, you've been really good. You've just been like going for it like a champ. I think it's obviously easier because I've got, like, I'm hanging on to Connor and like nearly snipping his back off. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then my like. mum's my mum's actually doing it. So I don't know whether at some point they'll swap over and you know, but having that two person situation, I think Helps if it was it? just me and you, I think I would jump back mm -hmm. because oh. I am so fearful. Yeah. But yeah. No, you've been absolutely flying for it. Yeah. So, you know, you're nearly at one week down already. I know, day five. Day five, so you know, it's going, it'll go quick. I hope so. It does. Small part of your day, you get it done, and you can move on. Live yeah. the rest of your life again, isn't it? Live the rest of my life. Live the rest <laughs> of your life to the fullest. Look at the height difference. I know, and look at my little head when I've got my hair up. <laughs> <laughs> got more on my fat. Nice and brave, nice and brave. Done this loads of times now. That's it. Oh, well. Same, darling. Oh, well. There you go, there you go. There you easy, go, easy. Good job. Dave. Wasn't as stingy as yesterday. Wasn't no. We've received a couple of nice cards. I mean, Mum got this gorgeous little gift for us. I'm gonna open it and show you. I've just washed my hair and tried to style my new bangs, but not having any luck. I'm not gonna lie. I definitely need a Dyson Air Wrap. <laughs> um, this really cute little gift me Mum got with. It's so nice. So this is how it comes. Picture and then sending positive vibes, love you both millions, and another picture of us. And then it's a 
a little proud of you bracelet with a charm on this rose gold heart is just to say i'm proud of you in every way and that's off me mom how lush is that so yeah i'm gonna put that on and i'm gonna keep it on because it's so nice and so gorgeous and i'm feeling okay i'm not feeling bad at all i had a bit of drama at work drama yesterday which was highly uncalled for and not cool but we'll not go there so stuff like that i'm just literally avoiding and i'm just thinking do you know what it's not worth my energy i'm feeling good um taking this is such a positive the longer i feel good the better i know at some point the hormones are probably going to kick in and i'm going to feel like crap but we're now thursday started the injection saturday and so far so good there you go take two <laughs> <laughs> it's for you for doing one week so well done Thank you. You're Just had my seventh. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, hiding you? in the back. Just been up every morning doing them for us, but I've just had my seventh day injection. So we started Saturday and it's now Friday, so that's seven days, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, as a reward. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need a bedtime ritual. Oh, cute. Oh, that's lovely. Can you use that? Yeah. I asked the woman if it was like all natural. Yeah, it is. It, it is. is, yeah. Neom is. Yeah. That's good. Ask the woman. Good on you, Connie. Well, thanks. I'm mm -hmm. just a thank you. I do. Mm -hmm. You're the one doing all the hard stuff. So that's nice. Well, that's nice and thoughtful. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. So it has officially been a full week since i've started my injections so it's saturday and i started last saturday so it's essentially day eight but it feels like day seven if that makes sense and yeah feeling okay had a bit of a stressy day yesterday i felt like my emotions were running high there's been a lot that has happened this week which isn't ideal because i wanted to avoid any stress any upset any craziness and yeah just unforeseen sort of circumstances just life things come things happen and it is about the way you deal with them but i think i guess for sure if you're going through this journey i would say put yourself first and don't be a people pleaser because that's not going to serve you you need to put your best interest at heart because that is what's going to achieve the best results during this so today we've got my sister's baby shower i'm really excited i can't wait it's my little sister and she's due her first baby in October so yeah hoping it's gonna be a lovely day obviously when I first found out that Lauren was pregnant earlier in the year it was a little bit of a bit of a pill to swallow not because I wasn't happy or because I couldn't wait to be an auntie but I think because this journey has been quite hard and quite long and quite uncertain for me and Connor it doesn't matter who it is in my inner circle it just feels a little bit hard to swallow when you hear that news and i want to say that and i want to be honest because i don't want you to feel like you're a bad person for feeling that way because i definitely did i felt really bad i wanted to be like ecstatic and so happy but it just took a little bit of an adjustment period because at that point when we found out we were actually presented with the opportunity of having IVF and we were placed on the waiting list so it kind of all collided at the same time but you know it, it it's just one of those things it, it's going to happen you're on your journey everybody's on their journey and it's nobody's fault it's an amazing blessing it's a gorgeous joy to be pregnant and be you know having a baby so it's just hard when you know that what you want is really challenging but yeah just thought i'd mention that because it's been a little bit of a journey and but yeah i'm super happy and i can't wait yeah i think just always remember that you are valid to have your feelings and those things will make you feel a certain type of way and don't feel bad about that just honor those feelings and remember that you're on your own journey and you're on your own path and hopefully your miracle will happen soon too so yeah and have a gorgeous day can't wait can't wait for the baby to be born um i think the baby's going to be born around the same time as we have our egg retrieval and implantation so yeah just me one week down one week down four to go four to go and how well is my baby girl doing look how pale you make me look <laughs> caribbean thing. <laughs> 
How was your first baby shower? It was very nice. I thoroughly enjoyed. How about one next? Hopefully. Had such a nice time at the baby shower and I'm just so glad that it went lovely jubbly mm -hmm. and yeah, really nice, yeah, feel really good about it. Shower time, relax time and mm. yeah, day eight of injections tomorrow. No, no, today it was today. Was it? Uh huh. Day, day you it was You started today. on a Friday, I'm sure. No, I started Saturday. But you've done one for a week, so today it was today. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, how does that work out? Yeah. How does seven days work out as eight? Yeah, but like you've done seven in total. This is day number eight. Day to tomorrow will be day nine. So yeah, it is confusing. I do it here. Yeah. Point is, getting through. Good morning. So I just wanted to jump on here because I edited some of the vlog yesterday and I realized I was talking so much about how anxious I've been to start the injections and I didn't want it to change how I'm feeling, like the recovery that I've made since having my surgery last year, getting my Hashimoto's diagnosis, getting myself back to me. Come with me, I am stewing some apples downstairs. And I didn't want this vlog to be super negative, I want it to be super honest. Yeah, I want it to be super honest and I want it to be a true representation of how I'm feeling and how I have been going. I just felt when I was editing that it was a little bit negative and maybe me, I just don't want to come across like super negative but then I spoke to Connor about it and he's like, this is your reality Beth, like genuinely like however you're feeling you have to be honest with that otherwise it's not authentic but I did want to come on here and update you guys because we are now day 12, day 11 or day 12 of injecting and I feel great. I feel absolutely great. Like, I don't want to speak too soon and touch wood, but I genuinely feel so good. I feel like I've got energy. I feel healthy. I feel good. My mood's great. <laughs> so, like, everything that I was concerned about, about my mood changing, about me feeling, like, really unwell or really poorly, like, all of those things haven't happened. So... I just want to let you know that even if you're fearing the worst, the worst actually might not happen. I mean, don't forget, we have got a long way off yet. We're still not even at the halfway point, but I just wanted to say I'm feeling great and I'm actually really pleasantly surprised. So long may it continue. Now, we haven't got a scan until next week to see that my ovaries have been switched off and that we're good to go with the next lot of injections. So I will keep you posted after that scan. Good morning. It is the 11th. Oh, wow. It's September the 11th. I am now over halfway through the injection process, I think. I'm just taking each day as it comes. Um, I'm still just taking the one, doing the one injection in the morning and um, I've got a scan next Monday which will just show if the ovaries have shut down and stuff. And then the following day, I think I start taking the second injection which is a stimulating injection which stimulates the ovaries, legs, the follicles and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, just sort of jump on. Um, I've done my plan my face and I've cut it. That's not ideal. I didn't use my Hollywood browser, so that's what I get for using a cheaper alternative. I've just been in the shower. I'm feeling a bit emotional a day. Yeah, just feeling quite overwhelmed, a bit stressed out, just worried about loads of different things. Just like got feel like I've got like a lot on my plate at the moment. Yeah, just loads going on. Um, I am having some like hot flushes. I think that's what they are. <laughs> like through the night I'm waking up and I'm absolutely boiling hot like I'm not sweating like the outside of my body isn't hot but the inside is so hot and I'm getting that like quite a lot throughout the day mostly towards the end of the day and then through the night so that's disturbing my sleep quite a bit felt well I've just got my tiny little aircon unit that I bought when we lived in Manchester and it was the hottest place ever like our apartment and um, I've been using that through the night and that has been helping because we've been having some gorgeous weather and then it's turned a little bit for the worse and it started raining but yeah that's one of the symptoms I'm definitely feeling and tiredness I'm very tired I feel so exhausted I'm going to bed like every night about half nine and like it's like needed so yeah 
that's where I'm at, just thought I'd jump on and give a little update, I find it really hard not to share this real time and not to be sharing this on my stories but you know I just think it's probably better that I kind of just delay sharing this journey because as much as I really love and appreciate the support that I always receive from you guys I think there is an element of pressure and expectation and I don't mean that from you I probably mean that just to, from myself in the sense that if I start sharing about my fertility journey you know like if it's successful and then if it's not successful and all that kind of stuff like it just feels a little bit more pressure and I kind of want to share that news like when I'm ready to <sighs> rather than oh, sorry I just find it really hard to hold I need to just put it on my tripod rather than be holding it like that but yeah yeah, I'm, I am in two minds whether I should be sharing this live in real time or whether I'm doing the right thing to kind of hold off and yeah, just feeling a little bit overwhelmed today, you know, um, not mentioned this before but like my grand has not been very well since April and it's, you know, personal and it's private and it's family business but yeah, some days are harder than others because I worry about them terribly. Um, Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like a natural warrior, so then if anything is going on with my family, the people I love and stuff, it just adds a whole extra layer and I'm um, really feeling that. So yeah. But so far, so good. No complaints. Um, just feeling the emotions a lot at the moment. Good morning, I thought I would just check in. We are well over the halfway point now. We're actually on week, the end of week three or the start of week three. No, we've done three weeks um, and I'm feeling pretty good. I've had a few days where I felt a bit groggy, headachey, super tired. I'm not sleeping very well. I'm starting to get bruises on my tummy and I've had a few lumps on my tummy. But apart from that, I'm feeling really, really good. I've got a scan on Monday and then we go on to our overleap injections as well as the busarellin so then I'll be getting injected twice per day and that's when the stimulating starts so I think that's when the distension and the bloating and more of the heavier side effects come along. I've also got some spots like around the chest area and around my shoulders but quite lucky because I've only had a few on my face and then that's kind of been it. So yeah. I am dressed and ready to go to Manchester because I am a guest speaker at the Endo Social at Holland and Barrett for the Endometriosis Foundation. If you didn't know, I am an Endo Foundation ambassador. So I kind of wasn't sure whether I'd be able to go or not because I didn't know how I'd feel at this point, but I do feel pretty good. So Connor's gonna drive us there and back. We're gonna have a little bit of a shop and have some food and then come back because yeah, we've not really done much since I've started the injections. I've been taking it easy as much as I can because I like to stay busy yeah we're gonna do that I think it'll be quite nice for us to get out go to our favorite city have a little bit of a day out or an afternoon out after I've done my my part of the speaking at the event and I'm actually really excited to meet um some of you guys as well there because I know lots of people are actually going so yeah it'll be really exciting but yeah I'm just grateful that I feel so good at this point <sighs> morning guys it is Monday we are just parking up. Um, had a bit of a stressful morning and yeah, I had to have three finger pricks because I needed to do a full thyroid profile. None of them worked so, and I hate it. If I'd have recorded it, you would have been like, what the hell? I was like pulling my fingers away and then like I eventually did it and just not enough blood come out. But we're here to have our first scan and hopefully be instructed to have our stimulating injections from tomorrow. I've been quite good. I know I've kept in touch during, but yeah, I may kind of had a bit of an argument this morning over face wash. So that's why I'm a bit downtrodden this morning. But yeah, I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know how it goes. Hopefully my ovaries have switched off like they should so that we can stop the stimulating injections tomorrow. <laughs> Put the feel at the line and if it moves the same and you've got no activity on either of you. Okay. Alright? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So between those two crosses the line and the mm -hmm. And you've got the endometrial 
the cyst on that oh, because you, you do have endometrial yeah. cyst oh, so yeah. is that so that is that since the last time we looked at it because i don't think they mentioned that because i had an operation last year yeah. so has that come back there's a little small Twenty-four millimeters there. Okay, but we'll just monitor yeah, it through yeah. the treatment. Sorry, I'm just a little it's bit okay. of pressure. Just that this is your bladder. Mm -hmm. Fill in the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Big bladder. I need a big bladder. bladder. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's okay, That's your ovary there on yeah. your right side, and there's nothing going to water happening there. Right. So everything's fine. You could then move on to start your um okay. your other injections tomorrow. So I'll get you one of the okay. girls to start to show you that okay and make the point for a scan next week right lovely okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, you. Thank 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 you. you. Thank so much thank you does that say we'll monitor that through your treatment will it affect it do you think or um we'll just keep an eye on it we we'll just have to see how follicles grow around it yes but yeah, we're always fine. fine i mean it is quite small so. yeah mm -hmm. well, so. So we're just out at my scan. It looks like my ovaries have all been turned off, which is good. Obviously I was a bit emotional because the nurse said that I have an endometrioma on my left ovary, which is where I had all my surgery. And so it means it's obviously, like that wasn't there last time, was it? I don't think so. I don't think she mentioned anything, but I'm not 100% sure. I just know that I would remember so like I just got upset because I was just like anything that's going to implicate this journey like I just want it so bad so I don't want I just don't want that annoying <laughs> stupid thing to affect it any more than it already has I'm just feeling a bit deflated and just a bit worried to be honest I knew how to use them correctly because I might have to come in and <laughs> but yeah like obviously it wasn't um, it wasn't ideal hearing about like the, the cyst but you know we, we, they did sort of reassure us to say that you know because we were under the impression when you have the stimulation injections it's going to cause the enemies just to come back with a vengeance but um, she kind of reassured us to say that because you're continuing to take the bus around and that keeps things suppressed um, so it will sort of negate that so yeah they just need to keep an eye on it but they don't think it's going to cause any issues yeah I mean I have been feeling something in my left ovary to be honest I have like genuinely and I'm wondering if it's that I mean it is tiny yeah. but still <sighs> yeah very I'm just, I think when you've got endometriosis or just any anything you know you are like very in tune with your body and you kind of tuned into it if that makes sense like you're very tuned in you're very um connected so i've known that something's something's going on i kind of just don't want it to implicate it and i did ask like will you still be able to use my right ovary and they're like yeah we'll still be able to use your left ovary as long as it doesn't kind of get in the way of certain follicles and stuff like that but they'll go around it if they have to so yeah just uh just something <laughs> just something else <laughs> Oh, honest, I just need to have my moment and then just move on from it because, like, I just, the worry is just, like, next level. It's a bit later on now. I just thought I'd jump on. It's just a lot to process in one day. Like, ovaries are switched off, the, the uterus lining's looking good. Moving on to my stimulating drugs. Which I think are the ones I go. They are the intense ones. So I'm very much bracing myself for that. I've cried a lot today. I feel really bad. I cried at my granddad's house because my mum was like, what happened? And yeah, I just think it's so hard to like, I've had the amount of surgery I had last year and then to find out I've got an endometrioma. End, uh, I can't even pronounce it. Endometrioma. I think that's how you say it, but a cyst on my ovaries, on my ovary, 
obviously can't implicate hopefully it doesn't but it can't implicate their access to getting the follicles the eggs all of that kind of stuff i just don't want to do the whole like crying and i just want to be strong and just like get through this but like there's just like such a heavy feeling of like is it gonna work like everything just seems to be like really difficult like like I'm naturally quite a positive and strong person but it just feels like everything's just been like a super uphill battle for the past few years and like this is just the cherry on the cake and all I want is a baby that's all I've ever wanted so yeah I just hope and pray that this stupid sis goes away on its own or at least that it doesn't implicate anything and that it's a success like I can't help but wonder if my endometriosis that I got picked up years ago if I'd be going through this right now when my intuition tells me that I wouldn't be and that just stings 